Hey guys. So today I thought I'd do another uh, video on some interesting or kind of different things in my collection. Um, you know, I always enjoy making these videos because, you know, a lot of times we can, you know, always view the same pictures on the internet or videos of just, you know, common stuff. And so, you know, I like to put these videos together and just show, I guess, maybe some of the uncommon or unique things uh, that I have in my collection uh, that kind of make them a little bit different from some of the other things that I have. And um, I just want to let you guys know how much I really appreciate you a lot. Uh, my channel has really grown over the past couple years, especially. Um, I've now been making videos over seven years, and it's hard to believe it's been an awesome journey, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, my collection has grown a lot, and, you know, I, just, I always try to encourage you guys to just, you know, take your time, and, uh, you know, it takes time and money to build a collection and everything, um, so I just want you guys to know to just pace yourself, and, uh, I guess, um, make the best decisions you can when you're trying to add items to your collection, um, you know, research, uh, different items you're interested in and get some knowledge and everything. And, you know, search different values as far as, you know, uh, what stuff normally goes for. Um, but, you know, there's those times when, uh, I mean, if you see something and you really want it and you don't mind spending a certain amount of money, I mean, go for it, you know. I mean, you know, everybody has opinions and everything, but if you're happy with the item, even if you do pay a little more than what it might normally go for, uh, in your area where you live, it might be harder to find than some other areas. And so you might have to you know, pay a little bit more than some other people in other areas of the, of the country or the world for that matter. So, uh, just continue to be passionate about it and, uh, you know, enjoy it along the way. And, uh, you know, it's, your collection will grow and your knowledge and everything will, you know, so I'm going to bring you guys in here and show you what I got on the table. So let's go. All right. So here is what I have this time. Uh, I mean, Nothing real amazing, I guess you could say, compared to maybe some of my other videos. But these are some kind of unique items, so I thought it would be a good day for this. Um, I'll go ahead and start right here at the top. Obviously, these are, are uh, goggles. They're uh, model 1944. And these are this is the original box. And uh, actually dated 1974. If you saw on the box there, and then right there, it's dated 1974 also. And um, what's kind of cool about these are, uh, you know, people, a lot of soldiers and people would write their name on stuff. And on the, like the headband or the strap, it says January, and then it says Beaver, which maybe, maybe that's a nickname or something. And then it's got the name Freddy, and then it says, it's kind of uh, hidden, but it says Short Stuff. So January, Beaver, Freddy, Short Stuff, so that's kind of a... A wide variety of of words or names, nicknames or whatever, which I'm sure somehow they tie into each other uh, involving the particular soldier that was issued and wore these. But uh, I thought that was kind of cool, you know. I mean, a lot of times you might just see a soldier's name and serial number on a helmet or a jacket or something. But sometimes you might see a nickname or whatever, you know, and it's kind of it's kind of different, you know. It's kind of fun. Um, it would be awesome if you could actually find the soldier and, and learn how they got that nickname, whether it was a family thing or their soldier buddies gave it to them or whatever. But moving on here, I've got, I actually got three books, but this one here is kind of cool. I got my notes here to the side, obviously. But this one is called The Battle is the Payoff by Captain Ralph Ingersoll. And what's cool about this book is let me show you where's that this book is dated 1943 so obviously it's right in the middle of world war ii right and, but what's really cool though i like about this is on the very back it actually talks about buying war bonds it's like you read the book and you look to the back cover and then it, it's basically encouraging people to invest and buy war bonds uh, it says it even talks about you, at most bookstores, banks, other places of business, become a true soldier of democracy. Which you know, obviously we're a, a republic. But anyways, um, it's kind of cool though. You know that it advertises on the back of this book about buying war bonds, and it's mid-war, so I like that a lot. Um, this book right here is really cool. This is actually thirty seconds over Tokyo. 
Um, my dad actually got me this book at like a thrift store, and I believe he gave a dollar for it. It might have been 50 cents. I think it was a dollar. Um, it's really uh, nice for its age. Um, you know, there was a movie made starring Van Johnson about this uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, which basically has to do with uh, the Doolittle Raid, you know, bombing uh, Japan in April of 1942. But it's got a C.D. Akers Jr. on there. I couldn't really find that name in little research I did. I'm not sure if that was a soldier, just the person that read owned the book and read it. But um, this book is also dated 1943, just like the other one. And what's kind of cool about this book is here in the back, it kind of talks about, you know, uh, the different uh, raiders and everything. And let me find it if I can. Bear with me. I know some of you guys are readers and some aren't, but see, it talks about the different raiders who took place in the, the Doolittle Raid. But what's cool, though, is it actually has their address, like where they live specifically during this time in the war. And I, I thought that was really awesome. Like, it actually gives their street address, their state, and everything. So, I, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of cool that it gave out, I guess, that kind of personal information for anybody who owned this book would have. But, um, but like I said, it, there's different people all over the country, really. Missing in action, prisoners of war, and just different things. So, really, really good book. I'm grateful to have it. My last book here in this video... Yeah, most of you guys know my favorite Pacific battle is Iwo Jima. And um, this book is really cool because I actually got this at uh, the Goodwill bookstore. And I think I gave $3 for it. Pretty sure it was. What's cool about this book is this right here. So whoever, you know, originally owned this book, it was an Iwo Jima veteran. It says Private First Class RR, I guess Sewell, 5th Marine Division, 26th Regiment, 1st Battalion C Company, 60 millimeter mortar platoon. And then it's got Camp Pendleton. And then it says Camp Tarawa in Hawaii. Uh, Iwo Jima, seven, night, seven days and nights of hell. Um, so that's really cool that you know, an Iwo Jima veteran actually owned this book on Iwo Jima that I'm holding here. You know, it'd be awesome to kind of research that guy and see what I could find out about him. But not bad for three bucks. Right here, I got this at a thrift store, kind of antique junk store, about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. And it's basically, um, it's showing, like, headlines. I mean, it's, they're not original, but it's um, headlines from World War II. Just, like, famous um, headlines about, see, like, the invasion begins. And just all different stuff, which is in kind of rough shape, some of the pages, but... I just thought it was really cool, you know, like reading these headlines, almost as if I was alive back in the 40s reading them when they were first printed, you know. See, President Roosevelt dies and Nazis surrender, Nazis quit and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of cool. I like that. Moving on, I got this right here. I got this not too long ago, an old veteran. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, he was a veteran, but an uh, older man that I know, 78, a military collector. He gave me this. And it's a World War I victory medal, but as you see, it doesn't have the ribbon, and it's actually been ground off. And there's wear to it, so mine and his um, thoughts are that this was probably a World War I veteran's, obviously we don't know for sure, but it could be a good luck charm. Maybe something they kept in their pocket for years and kind of rubbed on, and that's why it's it's worn like it is. A good luck charm, kind of like a... Like an old half dollar, silver dollar, you know, people would keep in their pocket for years and it would eventually get wore out. So that's really cool there. Right here, I got this at a, a military auction back in 2012. And what it is, it's just some miscellaneous bullets, like all different calibers. Some of them are, are somewhat rare or difficult to find. Like this bag right here has 3840 Winchester, which is really cool. Um, then you got 38 long Colts, um, 38, looks like 3857 or 3859 Winchester, um, 2535 Winchester, 32 Smith & Wesson, um, what else we got, 32 Special Winchester, and uh, 300 Savage, 32 Long Rim Fire, and then we got, what is this, 
I can't read what that is, but it's kind of interesting. You know, just different random caliber. A lot of it's Winchester. 30-30 Winchester. Um, 32 Long Colt. 38 Colt ACP. And then we got, well, it's hidden, but smaller caliber there. And the last one here is thir uh, 22 caliber rim fire. But anyway, it's kind of interesting. You know, I like old bullets and stuff. You know, it's really cool. Some of those are, I guess, somewhat difficult to, to have or find. But anyways, moving on, I got this World War II uh, helmet. This one, when I bought at an antique store, it was painted silver. Completely silver spray paint, not brushed on. Spray painted. I did a paint removal. And come to find out, this was used during the hippie movement. Late 60s, early mid 70s. And I uncovered a bunch of weird symbols. Like peace symbol right there. And um, it actually says hippie right there. If you can see it. It says hippie. And then there's a number 5. And just a bunch of weird symbols and letters. and uh, So you can see the peace symbol there. And, you know, a lot of these helmets and stuff were used by, you know, the hippie movement, especially helmet liners and stuff. Just a bunch of weird symbols and stuff. And the inside has definitely been cooked in. And who knows what has been cooked in here. I don't know if it's drugs or... It almost looks like somebody crapped in here, which I guess that's possible too. But So I don't really... With this helmet, I don't really try to touch that area because I don't know what that substance is. But really cool though. And lastly, I got this uh, duffel bag, and what's cool is it's got an anchor that was hand-drawn on there. And then it's got this right here. It's got a skunk with the trash can and the name Stinky. So obviously that would have been a nickname. It also has the soldier's name, Mastridge PA, and then it's got the serial number. Now I actually located two soldiers with this name. One of them was a senior and one of them was a junior. The senior was World War II and the junior was... Uh, in Vietnam, and I haven't narrowed down whether it was the father or the son whose duffel bag this was. I couldn't find a date or anything in here. I mean, I'm not great on duffel bags. It looks World War II. I guess it could be post-World War II, but there's the handle there, and it's got U.S. on it, so some of you guys could let me know if this is World War II or 50s or 60s, but I thought it was really cool that it's got a skunk and the name Stinky on there. But anyways, guys, hope you like this video. Um, I say it all the time. I really do have a lot more videos on the way and planned. Uh, my man cave is coming uh, right along, and I can't wait to show you guys uh, how it looks now. Uh, some of you won't think it's changed a whole lot, but it has changed some. Moved different things around, added a lot. But I'm really looking forward to sharing that video with you and some of the other ones coming up. Thank you for all the support. Please like, comment, share, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. And I'll be getting back to you soon, so thank you.